What's going on, guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here to talk to you about Ewoks Battle of Endor. Uh, I could probably sum up my feelings on this movie in about three minutes or less. Uh, there is very little for me to say about this that I didn't already say about the Ewoks Caravan of Courage movie. In many ways, it's very similar uh, to that movie in the sense that uh, what little story there is with this movie doesn't really kick off until over halfway into the movie. Uh, so the little girl uh, from the previous movies. Sindel. Uh, her entire family dies in the opening scene of this movie. Uh, there are these uh, monsters who I guess live on Endor, uh, and they are looking for the power. Uh, and then Sindel, uh, she and Wicket, uh, played by Warwick Davis, uh, they eventually find uh, this old hermit living uh, somewhere on Endor, played by uh, the uh, diabetes guy, uh, Wilford Brimley. Uh, they find him, and he is very crotchety. Get out of here. I don't like visitors. I don't want your women here. But he has a heart of gold. Uh, and so uh, he eventually kind of softens on them and lets them stay with him. Uh, and then eventually, uh, Sindel is kidnapped by the woman working for uh, the leader of these monsters. Uh, I did a little reading on this movie on Internet Movie Database. She is apparently uh, one of the Night Sisters uh, from Dathomir. Uh, if I had watched this movie uh, over a month ago, uh, before I uh, read any of this expanded universe stuff that I've read this month, I would have had no idea what a Night Sister was. Still, don't really have an, any idea what a night sister is other than force users. But uh, anyway, uh, this uh, night sister, she kidnaps uh, Sindel and she says, uh, you know, uh, we're going to kill her if you don't give us the power. Uh, and eventually, I guess we find out the power is a power source to a spaceship, but when the bad guys get the power, uh, the source for uh, the star cruiser that Sindel's family had, they're disappointed in it. They're like, well, this isn't what we wanted. We wanted to do something. Uh, and maybe they're getting it confused because we do find out that Wilford Brimley's friend who crashed with him on this world many years ago, he went searching for something. Uh, and it's possible that the bad guys think that this power source is what he was searching for, but I'm not really sure. Uh, but anyway, uh, the movie ends uh, with uh, the Ewoks uh, getting freed uh, from captivity by this bad guy, uh, and then Wilfred Brimley, he helps uh, free Sindel uh, and the Ewoks. Uh, there's a Battle of Endor. Uh, I just assumed when I saw the title that that was the Battle of Endor from Return of the Jedi but we do not see any stormtroopers here, uh, anything from Return of the Jedi. So this is an entirely different battle of Endor. So uh, Wicket speaking English in this movie, he speaks better English here than he did in Caravan of Courage. Uh, that could be that these two movies take place after Return of the Jedi. Uh, I have not looked at a Star Wars timeline. I have no idea what the actual timeline is or if these movies have been relegated into uh, discontinuity. I don't know. Uh, but if you want to look at these movies as being canon, uh, uh, I'm guessing that they take place after Return of the Jedi, and this is not the Battle of Endor, but a Battle of Endor. Uh, but then using uh, the power uh, source from uh, Sindel's family ship, uh, Wilford Brimley and Sindel, they uh, plug that thing into Wilford Brimley's old ship, I guess it's compatible, uh, and then they leave. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, on the one hand, uh, I found it really horrifying that we get to see uh, Sindel's family die in brutal ways. Uh, actually, we don't see them die on screen. We do see Sindel's brother, Mace. He's dragging his mother's dead body away from the battlefield. Uh, a lot of that is pretty horrifying uh, for little kids, I would think. Uh, the target demographic for this, I would think, would be like five-year-olds. And I would think that they would be too young to be seeing some of this horrifying stuff uh, that happens on screen, and some of it is left to the imagination. We don't know how Mace dies, so uh, you get to imagine some horrifying way that he died. Uh, but then uh, we do get to see uh, what I feel like are some pretty good-looking uh, kind of claymation, stop-motion uh, creatures here that the bad guys have. Uh, these uh, They're not really... Uh, they're, they're bigger than horses, but smaller than elephants. I don't really know how to describe them. Uh, it looks charming in a Ray Harryhausen kind Kind of way. And I have said before that while I love Ray Harryhausen, uh, I feel like Star Wars was the death knell for this type of animation. Uh, but even though this came long after the first Star Wars movie, I was still willing to give a pass uh, for this very Ray Harryhausen uh, way of uh, animating these creatures on screen. I thought it looked kind of adorable and cute. Uh, I kind of liked it. Uh, the directors of this movie, uh, they went on to become screenwriters for the movie Pitch Black, uh, which was the 
Vin Diesel movie. It was the first in the Riddick series. Uh, and uh, that also had uh, people stranded on a planet with lots of dangerous stuff going on. Uh, that's about where the similarities end. You don't have cute, adorable little creatures in the Riddick movies, but uh, thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, and apparently, uh, Wilford Brimley did not get along with those directors, so uh, Joe Johnston, who was once again the production assistant or production manager uh, on this one, just like he was in Caravan of Courage, uh, he uh, directed all of Wilford Brimley's scenes, which is a sizable amount of the movie. Uh, Wilford Brimley is in over half of the film, so I would say Joe Johnston is just as much, if not more, of the director of this movie than the actual directors uh, credited. Uh, but uh, yeah, not a whole lot to say here. Uh, it's a whole lot of Sindel uh, trying to uh, live uh, in uh, Wilford Brimley's home, and he says, uh, don't start a fire out here, you're going to set the woods on fire. If you're going to do a fire, do it in a fireplace. And then uh, they go and they uh, get caught in one of his traps that he has, and he says, you shouldn't be out here, it's dangerous out here. It's a whole lot of that, and not a whole lot of these bad guys trying to get this power source. Uh, so I feel like they knew their target audience is not going to care that there's not much story here. Uh, who cares as long as we can show them cute stuff like this little monkey with super speed and Wicket and the little girl, uh, they're hugging each other, stuff like that. Who cares as long as they get that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, not a great movie, uh, but... I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. If you are like, man, I gotta go get the oil changed in two hours, uh, but I can't go any earlier than that. What am I gonna do with my time until then? You could pop this in. Uh, there are worse ways you could spend your time, but not many worse ways. Uh, but uh, anyway, those are my thoughts on Ewoks Battle for Indoor or Battle of Indoor. Uh, I hope you guys like this video, and I will see you guys in the future with some more videos. In the meantime, have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.